All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about the Mora Clipper. Now, this video is a little bit interesting because the Clipper is not that predominant and many people probably don't honestly know about this knife. But I really wanted to talk about the Mora Clipper because it is the knife that put Mora essentially in track for blowing up and becoming the company that produces really great affordable bushcrafting knives that we know and love. So without any further ado guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Instagram, the Patreon, the support means a ton, and you get to see more awesome videos just like this. So buckle up, maybe get some popcorn. This is gonna be quite the story, quite the history around the Clipper. So the Clipper itself doesn't have much of an official story or history, I should say, but the knife was designed by Frost Knife Factory, which would later get bought out by Mora Proper uh, in 2005. The Clipper was originally intended to be essentially a do-all utility blade for working class people that needed a knife that could do things like gut and fillet fish, cut rope, work wood, and just do a wide variety of tasks that you might need to do on a job site. Primarily, a lot of this revolved around Swedish work sites. And in fact, many of these blades uh, from companies like F uh, Fjellraven, they made, you know, a little pockets on their trousers to hold these knives. So they were very much designed for people working in job sites where they needed a knife. But at the same time too, this knife was designed to be incredibly cheap and easily replaceable when damaged, rusted, or lost. So essentially that is kind of the clipper in and of itself. Now the transformative part to, Mora, to the Mora Clipper that it found its way onto the fastly emerging bushcraft and survival practice scene, being recommended and fielded by icons of the industry, such as Morris Kohansky and other really well-known people. And they recommended this blade because it was a solid, reasonably robust and proven blade that was also very, very cheap. You could easily do the necessary bushcrafting field and camp knife tasks with, once again, it being remarkably cheap and pretty darn durable. So essentially that is how it grew. And that's kind of this knife essentially alongside the classic one and two and being recommended by people like Cody Lundin really helped skyrocket the sales of the Mora Clipper. Now, the Mora Clipper helped transform uh, Mora as a whole because during the latter part of the early 2000s, like 2009 to 2011, there was a lot of feedback from the community and that led to the introduction of things like the Mora Companion. It also led to things like the Mora Companion HD, the Bushcraft Black, and then later, uh, in 2015, Mora would release the Garberg, Kanspool, and Eldris to really serve as official bushcrafting blades for the community after listening to feedback from different user groups. So essentially, that is how the little clipper, the little Mora clipper, transformed Mora from just another Swedish knife brand, such as, or I should say another Scandinavian knife brand, such as Martini, Mora, and several others. Uh, they really pushed Mora out onto the mainstream. Like I said, people like Morris Kohansky and Cody Lundin recommended the heck out of the Mora Clipper back during its day, you know, like I said, 2009 to 2011. And in that fastly emerging market just blew this knife out of the water. So that is the Mora Clipper and why it's important. Now, who is this knife for? Honestly, it's kind of sad to say, but really not many people, unless you really want the Mora Clipper for its collectability and its history, which I think it definitely does have. And I personally like my Mora and its ergonomics slightly more than the Companion. But as far as it goes, this blade is vastly outweighed and outperformed by things like the Mora Bushcraft Black, the Cons Bull, the Garberg, even the Companion, Companion HD, um, even other knives like the Condor Terrace sore are just vastly better than this knife. Uh, I would say truly and truthfully about the only reason outside of the historical background for the Mora Clipper that you would actually want a Mora Clipper is that they are still remarkably cheap. And I just Googled, uh, I think Knife Center still has some of these blades for I think like $13. It seems like inflation has not gotten to this blade. So even to this day, if you're still looking for a very budget, either survival or bushcraft blade, the Mora Clipper is still 
very viable as being a, you know, a remarkably cheap option. You can get it for anywhere from $12 to $15 reliably. So still a very cheap knife. Like I said, it seems like it's one of the few things inflation hasn't touched. So ultimately, while it's, like I said, far surpassed by many better options, it definitely is a really cool blade and an awesome, excellent piece of history that, like I said, quite literally acted as the catalyst between the Mora Clipper and the more classic one and two or number one and two pretty much acted as the catalysts that threw or launched Mora into what they are today as far as a knife making company. So really awesome story. Really enjoyed researching that one and learning about the Mora Clipper. I personally really like the knife and it was actually the first knife that I got when I got serious into bushcrafting and once again kind of a part of that train of people who bought that knife later the Companion, Companion HD um, and obviously I own many Moras such as the Konsbul Eldris, uh, Garberg and so many more so i definitely own a lot of moras love moras and it's cool to see where they came from anyways guys as always god bless and i'm out